I'm Ryan Donnelly from the School of Pharmacy at Queen's University in Belfast, where I hold the Chair in Pharmaceutical Technology. My group at the school work on design and manufacture, characterization and utilization of microarray patches. In terms of the video on screen now, what we can see on the left hand pane are microneedle arrays inserted into skin and visualized using optical coherence tomography. And you can see here that the 3D image indicating the microneedles actually penetrated into a piece of skin. And you can see in the side on images that the microneedles penetrate beneath the stratum cranium and into the viable skin layers. And the images on the right hand side here basically show the impact of insertion of microneedles into the skin. So first of all, in the, the top left of the right hand image, what we can see are a series of punctuation marks in the skin. On the right hand pane and below, you can see that whenever we insert microneedles into the skin, what we cause is a little bit of inflammation and this leads to enhanced blood flow in the actual area. So given the increased interest in developing microneedle um, patches at present, not only um, for drug and vaccine delivery, but also for patient monitoring, it's really important that we have a series of tools on um, design, um, manufacture, characterization of microneedle systems. And characterization is an area that is extremely important. So what we want to do is to consider the basic metrics that characterize microneedles and how they behave. So they have an important physical function in that they need to be able to penetrate into the skin. And in this series of short videos, what I want to do is to give an overview on some of the basic aspects of microarray patches and to create awareness of related tools and techniques that can be used in the characterization of microneedle systems. So I'm going to talk through four short videos on the characterization of microarray patches. So the first will focus on the geometry of the actual microneedles themselves from a physical point of view and the various in vitro and in vivo tools that can be, be utilized in characterizing and, and understanding the geometry. Many microneedles are made from polymeric materials and so they will either dissolve to release an active or swell in the skin for controlled administration of an active. The swelling microneedles can also be used then to capture fluid from the skin for monitoring or diagnosis purposes. It's important that we understand that microneedles will create pores in the skin and these should be relatively short lasting in that we want skin barrier function to actually recover so that we have a safe delivery system or monitoring system. So it's important that we're able to study the recovery kinetics of the skin. Moving forward, we want microarray patches to be systems that people can use um, and that are reproducible in the hands of people within their own homes. So it's important that we consider how we can study reproducibility. And moving forward, there's increasing interest in taking microneedles forward to yield commercialized products. And so I would like to consider an industrial outlook and how we actually realize the potential of microarray patches for patients. In this first video, I will look at some of the essential tools and techniques to accelerate microneedle array patch and um, translational development. What I want to do is to, to give you a brief introduction to the geometry of microarray patches and some of the, the measurement tools that we can actually employ. So in terms of what microneedle array patches can be used for, they have many different applications. 
And they're illustrated in the schematics on this slide that comes from a recent paper of ours in Drug Delivery and Translational Research, for which I'm actually the Europe and Africa editor. So the first application obviously is in drug delivery. And we see that in the top right hand corner of the slide. Here we will have a, a microneedle patch that is loaded with or coated with a particular active that we want to deliver into or across the skin. So the most common active could be a vaccine. And what we want to do is to deposit that in the viable skin layers where the vaccine then will interact with the antigen presenting cells, which are abundant in the epidermis and dermis. And this is a potential application that has many benefits. So first of all, it takes the needle and syringe out of vaccination. And it means that the vaccine can potentially be delivered using a minimal skill. So you don't necessarily need uh, a skilled healthcare worker for this. Secondly, the vaccine could be formulated in a dry state so that we can bypass cold chain storage. And when we stick the microneedles into the skin, we will deliver our vaccine. Drug delivery can work in the same way. So we can deliver a drug substance into the skin where it can be rapidly absorbed by the rich microcirculation that exists at the top of the dermis. Or we can deposit a drug in a long acting form that would give us a sustained absorption over weeks or potentially months. Another application of microneedles, as we see in, in the bottom um, right hand side, is to allow us to treat specific diseases of the skin, like, for example, a non melanoma skin cancer. So what you might do is to load some plasmonic gold nano rods into the microneedles and have it such that the microneedles are optically transparent to near infrared light, but will allow heat to diffuse out into the surrounding skin. So if you apply these microneedles to the skin where the, the skin lesion is, and then you apply near infrared light for even a matter of seconds, the microneedles through the action of the plasmonic gold nanorods will heat up and that can be used to destroy the unnatural, in this case, um, neoplastic lesion that will then allow the skin to heal up without causing scarring. So there could be benefits there as opposed to surgical excision. And a final important application is in fluid sampling. So here we apply microneedles to the skin and they're either swellable or hollow. And we can use that to capture the interstitial fluid from the skin. And what we know is that there's a good balance between the concentrations of drugs and many biomarkers in the interstitial fluid compared to what's in the actual blood plasma. So it could be a way of blood free patient monitoring. And this again could have a range of important applications. We also need to consider then how we might actually um, measure or understand the behavior of different microneedle systems. And what we can see here on the slides are some examples of different microneedle systems in the top left hand images. And then we have the use of optical coherence tomography. In simple terms, one might consider this to be the optical analog of ultrasound, where this scanning technique allows one to image into the viable skin layers through the microneedle systems. And what we can see in the little cutaway green and red image in the top right hand corner here are microneedles inserted into the skin of a human volunteer in, in vivo. And what we can see is the, the upper base plate of the microneedles, the lower base plate, and then the microneedles inserted beneath this translucent line, which is the stratum corneum. We also then have some images um, that shows a microneedle system dissolving in the skin. So the microneedle penetrates the skin, it takes in skin interstitial fluid and then dissolves. And again, optical coherence tomography allows one to study that in real time. In the, the bottom left hand images, what we can see is a microneedle system inserted into skin and look at the dimensional changes after a few hours in skin, it has swollen and increased in volume by taking up skin interstitial fluid. 
And what we want to do is obviously to be able to study also skin recovery. So this is just a, a little light micrographic image of the skin immediately after microneedle insertion. And we can see the typical mild erythema that is associated with insertion of microneedles. What we want to do is, is understand the nature of microneedles, how well they penetrate the skin, what happens to them after they penetrate the skin, so they do dissolve or do they swell, and also to understand what happens to the skin post microneedle removal. How quickly does it recover? Um, how quickly do pores close? And how quickly does erythema resolve? This is important in terms of the translational development of microneedle or microarray patch system. So one measurement tool that we have found to be particularly useful is actually the simple use of parafilm, which is found in every laboratory in the world for sealing containers. At the time, we were looking for an artificial membrane that could mimic the behaviour of the skin. And we looked at various different silicone elastomers. What we found was that they would typically um, indent, but whenever the microneedle was actually removed, they would just pop back up. So it didn't give us the opportunity to measure penetration depth or to really study anything about the behaviour of the microneedles actually in the artificial substrate. What we found was if we layered eight layers of parafilm, one on top of one another, and we inserted the microneedles, that actually the measured depth of insertion using either optical coherence tomography or by simply peeling each layer back and counting the holes under light microscopy and comparing them to the number of microneedles that were on the microarray patch, we actually had a method of confirming that a microneedle had suitable geometry and suitable physical properties to actually penetrate into a barrier, but also that when we compared the penetration depth between parafilm and human skin in vivo, what we found was that actually the depth of insertion and the pores created in the parafilm, as measured using optical coherence tomography and also light microscopy, were remarkably similar. And this is actually a tool that has been used by many laboratories right across the world now, not only in um, industry, but also in academic research to actually study the behavior of microneedles, particularly during the early development stages. The next aspect of microneedle characterization in terms of measurement tools that I want to consider is optical coherence tomography using particularly the, the VivoCite OCT from Mickelson Diagnostics, which is something that we have made extensive use of in our own laboratory. So this is basically like an optical version of ultrasound, but it's much, much higher resolution than ultrasound. So what this allows us to do is to obtain good visualization and objective quantification of polymer-based microarray patches in terms of their development. And we can use this technique not only in vitro with, for example, parafilm or excised neonatal porcine skin that we might have obtained from stillborn piglets, but also in vivo in human volunteers, because we have a system here that is CE marked for use in the clinic. And we've made extensive use of this um, technique for measuring the insertion depth of microneedles, for measuring the width of the pore created, for studying microneedle swelling and dissolution in the skin, but also then in studying skin recovery post microneedle removal. So here we have a consideration of how we might actually use optical coherence tomography to image important aspects of the performance of a microarray patch um, in the skin and how it might actually behave. So the image on the left that we've made just in, in orange and pink shows some of the key parameters that we can actually measure using optical coherence tomography because it is a quantitative technique. So we can measure the depth of microneedle insertion beneath the stratum cranium as we see labeled B here. We can measure the gap between the lower base plate and the stratum cranium as we've labeled A. 
and also the pore width so the, the width of the hole we've actually created in the, the skin and you can see then in the the images that are appended on the the right hand side so the green and red image at the top where we can actually measure um, the the pore width we can actually measure the depth of insertion and then we can actually see the various different structures of the skin um, in the little image from Sharma et al in the bottom right hand um, corner where we can see the epidermis the dermis and we've got an indication of blood vessels and we can measure then the microneedle um, insertion and these are really important aspects because as I mentioned microneedles are a physical tool to get your drug or vaccine into the skin or to access skin interstitial fluid for diagnosis or monitoring purposes so it's important that the microneedle will actually insert into the skin and that we can actually measure that quantitatively and understand what it is about the physical properties of a microneedle that enable it to either penetrate into the skin or that it actually doesn't penetrate particularly well and we need to redevelop the microneedle system in that case. So this is the um, completion of this particular um, set of, of slides. This is a, an area that we've spent quite a lot of time in considering in microneedle characterization. And we have considered in particular swelling, dissolution and, and skin recovery, um, but we will cover that in more detail in the, the coming videos.